This is a poem by Nikki Giovanni. If Black History Month is not viable, then wind does not carry the seeds and drop them on fertile ground. Rain does not dampen the land and encourage the seeds to root. Sun does not warm the earth and kiss the seedlings and tell them plain, you're as good as anybody else. You got a place here too. <laughs>
in line of what my folks say in Montgomery, in line of what they're teaching about love. When I reach out my hand, will you take it or cut it off and leave a nub above? If I found it in my heart to love you, and if I thought I really could, if I said, brother, I forgive you, I wonder, would it do any good? So long, so long a time you've been calling me all kinds of names, pushing me down. I've been swimming with my head deep underwater and you wished I would stay under until I drown. But I didn't, I'm still swimming. Now you're mad because I won't ride in the back, of, back end of your bus. When I answer, anyhow, I'm gonna love you still and yet you want to make a fuss. Now listen, white folks, in line with Reverend King down in Montgomery, also because the Bible says I must, I'm going to love you. Yes, I will. Or bust.
My scripture uh, for today is Psalms 30, verses 1 through 12. Amen. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast killed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of him, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for All night, right, but, but joy, joy mm. cometh in the morning. All right, man. All and right. in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was struggled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. All right. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To that end, that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. My vocal scripture is verse 5. Weeping may endure for the night, All right. but joy cometh in the morning. And my topic for today is waiting for the morning. Good God Almighty, I like that. <laughs> waiting for the morning. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak your word. Lord, set me aside and let the people hear you clearly, so that you receive all the honor and the glory. This I pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today's message came from a collision of random thoughts and images. A woman speaking at the Poor People's Campaign Virtual March was wailing because her children had been killed. And then person after person coming forward to share how systemic racism and economic exploitation have locked them into unsafe living conditions and Jesus. uncertainty. Jesus. Friends and family speaking about racial profiling, incidents at work and frustration that we are still seeing we shall overcome All right. over 50 years Ooh. after the civil rights movement. It brought to mind The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. In the first essay, he says, this innocent country set you down in a ghetto in which, in fact, it is intended that you should perish. You were born where you were born and faced the future that you faced because you were black and for no other reason. Jesus. You were born into a society which spelled out with brutal clarity and in as many ways as possible that you were a worthless human being. Jesus. In 1963, my parents missed a march on Washington because I was due any day. All right. So why, <laughs> why now do I get to march in 2020? Not as a commemoration, but so I can still say I am a human being. Amen. I'm so tired of crying. Lord and have mercy. I was just angry. Yeah. So when my my son and I were talking and he mentioned God gave Noah the rainbow sign, no more water to fire next, next time. time. All right. I said, good. Let's burn this down. <laughs> 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 then I, I came across this video by the rapper Prince EA. And he beautifully shared this tale of Harry Houdini and his failed attempt at escaping the jail cell. So in this story, uh, Harry Houdini tried and tried. Um, he even cheated, he had a, a piece of wire with him, but he could not get out. And then finally, he was tired and weak and he fell against the door, only to find that it was never locked. Mm. Now, we don't know if the story is true or not, but Prince EA brought out of this story that Houdini couldn't get out because he thought the door was locked. 
And he asked us to think about how many times we missed out on something because we thought a door was locked. All right. Now, you may say, wow, that is a great point, Prince EA. But what I was thinking is, man, I'm still angry. You're trying to tell me all I have to do is change my mindset? No, I, I don't believe it. But then I remember God is good. All the time, yes, yes. He's a deliverer. Hallelujah. And so in the midst of my sorrow, in the midst of my anger and feeling trapped, I heard weeping may endure for the night. night. But joy, joy coming in the morning. morning. Amen. So you might wonder how the jail cell relates to the message. Well, the bars that keep us trapped are represented by the issues put forth by Reverend William Barber. In speaking at the Poor People's Campaign, All he right. stated, All right. we are facing <laughs> systemic racism, <laughs> systemic poverty, ecological devastation, the war economy, and misguided religious nationalism. And although it's been decades since I first read The Fire Next Time, when I picked it up a little while ago, it felt like we're still in that same spot. Jesus. He wrote it in 1962, and yet here we are still facing those same struggles. Through word of mouth, movies, advertising, literature, classroom teachings, and the daily news, we have been molded and shaped to believe that we are less than. That's right, that's right. Take your time and minister. You minister, and that's good stuff. Yes. That's Whether good you stuff. call yourself African American All right. or black, yeah. we have been taught to hate ourselves. That's right. Oh my God, you on it now. <laughs> oh my God, stay right there, Holy Spirit. Don't no, you on it now. All right now. When seeking. Okay, all right, thank you. When seeking higher education, mm -hmm. using proper English, mm -hmm. striving to have the finer things in life. Mm -hmm. We are assailed with crowds of you acting white. All right. As if white people are worthy and we are not. That's right. That's right. In the workplace, respectable hair and clothing mm. is defined by what white people feel comfortable that's with. That's right. That's right. And in interactions with the police, black people are expected to be subservient Ooh. and grumbling oh and God. dare not express their right to be treated. As a human being. I never knew all that was in your mother. This is the year of our Lord 2020. Ooh. And it feels like we're trapped. The beautiful truth is, we have all been crafted in the image of our Maker, a fierce spirit, a spark of the divine. And God doesn't care about your title, your money, that's right. or your possessions. That's right, that's right. And if you don't believe it, just read Acts chapter 10, 31st verse, or first. I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality. This, this is why it is so easy for some people in positions of power, black and white alike, to feel they're being attacked. Or those who feel superior due to their skin color, or who feel their money puts them on a higher level, Come on. or running scared. They are standing on a mountain of lies because in America, we have been taught that poverty is a result of sin, that's right, that's right, a that's deficiency, right. or no work ethic. People are angry because they are finally facing the truth that skin color or money or position does not, not make you superior. superior. That's right, that's right. The, the system is rigged. We yes, keep saying rigged. it over and over. And it seems like no one is listening. When a policy change occurs, it's weak and just dresses up the status quo. We're angry and afraid. Many of us are just treading water and we think if we ask for too much, we'll lose everything. We've been trained. Every time the black community pulls together, it's destroyed by forces inside and out. We're all sitting in darkness. Some thinking there is no way out and others trying to make sure we never see a way out. I was thinking about what Prince EA said, about how we perceive the door to be locked. Right. I thought about how we have conformed to the world, letting it, us teach us to hate ourselves, making us think there's something wrong with us, that we just didn't work hard enough, Well. or it's the immigrant's fault, or African-American's fault that it's hard to move out of poverty. Mm. 
The darkness we sit in doesn't allow us, any one of us, to realize our full potential. Poverty is being twisted to mean that we are sinful or just not loved by God. But I thank God for Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Oh, 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 oh. And be not conformed to this world, world but be ye transformed by, by the renewing of, of your mind, mind yeah. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable yes. and perfect will of God. In other words, look beyond the limitations the world has set and know that we all can reach our potential as beings worthy of love, grace, and mercy. There is a willful ignorance of history by Americans in general. We don't want to acknowledge the wrongs because then those that benefit from the system will be called upon to address them. Instead, we ride in and make donations. It makes you feel good. I know I feel good when I give back to the community. <laughs> Amen. You know, when I help someone less fortunate. Amen. But really, that is the easy part. That's the easy part. That is what we do to ease our conscience if we turn a blind eye to systematic racism. That's right. And systematic poverty. That's right. I ask you, set your ego aside. Think about those who cannot see any hope other than just surviving. Think about how your choices impact not just you, but the community at large. Who speaks for those that don't have money? That's or right. Who speaks for them? It's mm. not for us mm. to determine mm. who is entitled to this house or that house. Well. Who deserves to be given another chance or who should pay the ultimate price for the slightest infraction? God deems us all worthy of love and abundant life. We're afraid of change. And unfortunately, there's a comfort in the known, even when it's unpleasant, even when it's ugly. So we stay trapped and the door isn't even locked. All right. It's been a long night and sometimes it seems like it's getting darker. We keep waiting for the morning because we are still bound by the constraints society has placed on us. Jesus lived and died to show us how to live how to care for each other, how to honor God. And what do we owe? Micah chapter six, verse eight. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That means we have got to make choices that allow everyone to have access to health care, education, and a roof over their heads. We've got to put self aside and come to terms with the fact that no one is more valuable than another. Stop the hero worship. All jobs are necessary for a healthy functioning society. Even in the entertainment industry, it's wonderful to see the sports teams and bands changing their names and looking at all the folks painting Black Lives Matter on Main Street. But all these things are just distractions from dealing with the truth. And so we're still waiting for the morning. Some weeks ago, it's very, very, very early in the morning, like pitch black in the morning. I heard a bird singing, singing like the sun was out and it was already having a fabulous day. And I thought, what does that bird know that I don't know? He knew morning was already there. He couldn't see the light, but he knew. Systemic racism, systemic poverty, ecological devastation, war economy, misguided religious nationalism, families crying because their children are being gunned down in the that's street. Right, that's right, Police that's right. Police brutality. Good God Almighty. I'm over 50 years old, and my story is the same as my parents and my grandparents. I was feeling like we're in a dark place right now. Oh my God. But I have hope. Yeah. I know God loves me. Yeah. And I know He loves you too. Yeah. He wants the most for His children. Ooh. When we set self aside and focus on the love of God, the constraints of this world cannot hold us back. Ooh. We may be surrounded by darkness, but God's love is the light in the darkness. The 30th song reminds us that we can trust God Jeez. Jeez. and that He is our deliverer. Jeez. It reminds us that God hears our cries and answers our prayers. 
I'm not going to sing, We Shall Overcome Anymore. That was yesterday. Ooh. That was last night. Ooh. Morning is here. Yes, it is. We're going to praise God Hallelujah. because we know our salvation is here. Our deliverance is here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Oh, freedom. Oh, Restless sleep, like my restless days, a battle between love and hate. My God says, love those that hate you, for they are his children too. He says that if I love you, it shows I love him because we all have God's spark within us. So truthfully, when I see you, it should be like looking in a mirror, a reflection of love. But when I hear your words and I see your actions, I don't see you, child of God. When I look in your eyes, I don't see a reflection of God's love. I see a reflection of my hate. My love runs out, but God's love is from an eternal wellspring. I must reach towards the creator to find that spark of life and love that I've allowed hate to cover. So when I hear your words and I see your actions, I can see you, child of God. When I look in your eyes with God's love, I will see past my failings, past my hurt. I will see that spark of light and love that you've buried away. One day my rest will come. The battle within will cease when I can look at those that hate me and they see love. 